Would the Japanese invade Australia? Well, for all the panic among the civilian population of Australia concerning a Japanese invasion in mid-1942, the Japanese never intended to carry out such an operation. Only on one occasion late in the war did Japanese troops come ashore in Australia. By January 1944, Japanese naval intelligence suspected that the United States was constructing a new naval base at Admiralty Gulf on the northwestern shores of Western Australia. The Navy made a request to the closest military forces to Western Australia to conduct a reconnaissance to confirm or deny their suspicions. Based on Ambon Island, the Japanese 19th Army contained a special commando-style unit called the Matsukikan, or Pine Tree, under the command of Captain Masayoshi Yamamoto. The Matsukikan contained graduates of the Army Intelligence School at Nakano in Japan, and they formed an elite reconnaissance force. Captain Yamamoto detailed one of his subordinates, Lieutenant Susuhiko Mitsuno, to put together a small team ready for insertion into Western Australia. Lieutenant Mitsuno's party departed on their mission from Kopang in Timor, part of the Japanese-occupied Netherlands East Indies, aboard a tiny 25-ton fishing vessel called the Hiroshi Maru on the 14th of January 1944. The rest of Mitsuno's team consisted of two sergeants, a superior private who would act as a radio operator, six Imperial Japanese Navy sailors, and 15 local Timorese disguised as fishermen. The Timorese would sail the vessel to Australia, and if any Allied aircraft or ships encountered the Hiroshi Maru, their presence would hopefully deter a more thorough investigation of the boat. The first attempt to conduct the mission was a failure, however, as the tiny fishing boat was caught in a ferocious storm that forced Mitsuno to scrub the operation and return to base on the morning of the 15th of January. The Japanese waited the storm out and then departed again on the evening of the 16th. Strangely, although the Japanese had already disguised their activities with the addition of the Timorese, they now took the contradictory step of providing the Hiroshi Maru with air cover for the voyage. Any Allied plane or ship that encountered a small fishing boat with its own dedicated aerial cover would arouse suspicion. 19th Army Headquarters instructed the 7th Air Division at Kendari to release an aircraft for the operation, and Staff Sergeant Aonuma found himself flying his Type 99 light bomber on circuits around the Hiroshi Maru as she motored towards Australia. On the 16th of January, as the fishing boat approached Cartier Islet, Aonuma spotted a submarine running on the surface. Undoubtedly allied, Aonuma decided to dissuade the submarine from making a close inspection of the Hiroshi Maru and dived in to attack. Lookouts aboard the submarine had already spotted the Japanese aircraft and the submarine immediately crash-dived, followed under the waves by two bursts of machine gun fire from the Type 99. As Aonuma passed over the white water, marking where the submarine had vanished, he dropped six 50-kilogram bombs. The bombs detonated underwater, and Aonuma circled over the spot several times, later reporting that the submarine had probably been damaged. The Type 99 light bomber continued her mission of flying cover for the Hiroshi Maru as the vessel approached the Australian coast. A radar system monitored the airspace over the coastline, forcing the Japanese aircraft to drop down low. Aonuma located Cartier Islet, returning to guide the Hiroshi Maru in. The first landfall made by the Japanese was at 9am on the 17th of January, when they reached East Island. The island is actually a coral reef that is exposed during low tide. 24 hours later, the Japanese reached Browse Island, and here Lieutenant Mitsuno and his men went ashore. Browse contained nothing except a ruined watchtower, but the island did provide the Japanese with a suitable laying up position. Timing his mission carefully, Mitsuno wanted the force to land on the mainland in the early morning of the 19th of January. After three hours on browse, the Hiroshi Maru weighed anchor and sailed through the night to the mainland, entering an inlet on the coast of Western Australia at approximately 10am, the first Japanese troops to land in Australia.
A light mist concealed the Japanese landing party as they quietly collected tree branches with which to camouflage the Hiroshimaru. Then the men ate a cold breakfast before beginning their mission. Mitsuno now divided his command into three parties, tasked with exploring different areas of the wilderness. Mitsuno commanded one, while the two sergeants, Morita and Furuhashi, each led another, and it was agreed that all parties would rendezvous back at the boat after two hours. Mitsuno even had an 8mm movie camera with him to record anything of interest that was discovered. The Japanese were to discover nothing of any military interest, all parties reporting only finding old campfires. After a night aboard the boat, Mitsuno ordered another series of patrols on the 20th of January. But by 2pm, and with nothing to show for their labours, Mitsuno decided to end the mission and return to Timor. The Japanese landings near Cartier and Browse Islands in Western Australia remain the only confirmed presence of enemy troops in Australia during the Second World War. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.